Alrighty, welcome to chapter four, section eight, called quadratic function. This is for math eight. Uh, so a couple of things on the screen here that you should see. The first thing is the due date. I don't see the due date on my teacher preview, but you should see it on your student screen. Uh, the second thing here would be attempts. So we always have unlimited attempts, meaning you can come back in and do this assignment as many times as you would like. And that's true on homework assignments, tests, and quizzes. Uh, number of questions. So this particular assignment has four questions. Uh, just depends on the section for the number of questions. Uh, grading policy is always best score, so whichever attempt is the best one is the one you keep. Partial credit is always enabled, so if you only answer one of four questions correctly, you get the credit for the one question, or however many you answered correctly. Um, please remember that once you start your homework, you must finish it before you can work on anything else. What that statement means is once I click start here, in the bottom right-hand corner of the student screen, you won't see it on my teacher screen, but on the student screen, you'll see Submit Assignment button. Always make sure that you click that button when you're ready to leave this screen. So from this point forward, whether or not I start any of these at all or I started all of them, um, I want to click Submit Assignment button. To get credit for them, you need to make sure that there's a green check mark that you have completely finished and click Check to for it to save your place. Um, but as long as you have a green check mark there, it will save your place and it will come back to where you left off. Um, Clicking the Submit Assignment button does two things. Number one, it stops the system from locking out of all of your other assignments, just like that previous screen said. And number two, it affects the grade book so that you can actually see a change in your grade and your teacher can see what you've been working on. Um, you have Explanation, Example, and Message Center on the side here. Explanation tells you that you're going to lose your question attempt because it's literally going to give you the solution to this question here. So it's not going to give you the answer unless you come type it in. Um, but you can look at an example. So this is um, a, an example of the same exact problem type. So you can kind of see exactly what it is they want you to do here. Um, once you're ready, you can go ahead and close it. You can open another example. You can also message your teacher directly from the screen. It attaches a picture so we know exactly how to come help you. All right, so we were looking at some of these um, graphing, well, it was more graphing a coordinate, almost like a point. Um, when we had just a number line like this. So if I said graph um, negative four on a number line, I would find zero and I'd go one, two, three, four, and I'd graph this. But I can see this is one dimensional, it's length. It's going left and right. So now what they want me to do is they want me to graph a line, y equals negative four, on a two dimensional plane. So I have length and I have width, so it's two dimensions now. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're graphing the line on this point. So we're not going to graph one single point. We're actually going to graph an entire line. Um, and what we need to remember is that when I have y equals or x equals, it means that all points for either y or x have to equal that number. So in this case, I have y equals negative 4. So I want a line where all points on that line are negative 4. So first I'm going to go to negative four, sorry, for y, and I'm gonna click on it. So this is the first one I want here. And if I want all of their points to be negative y, I need to pick another point, and it doesn't matter which point I pick, something else that will make it flat right on top of negative four, because that means that all those points have a y um, coordinate of negative four. So no matter where I go on this line now for the x-axis, I have to go down four to get to this blue line that I just drew. Um, so the idea here, if we're thinking of y equals mx plus b, is that we don't have an x term here. There is no x term. And it actually doesn't mean that there isn't an x term. What it means, if I go like this, y equals x, um, I have my, my plus b, it's actually minus 4. That's what this negative 4 is. The slope is actually 0, which makes sense. It's a flat line. There is no slope. That's um, what the flat line represents is a zero slope. So that's why I don't see an x term here. Now if I have one that says x equals a number, that is going to be a vertical line instead of a horizontal line. Um, and this actually means that the slope is undefined. Um, but it, it's kind of the same idea. It's a little bit harder to explain in this context because now we don't see the y. Um, but we will have a, a y-intercept 
Um, well, it's not even a y-intercept actually in that point because it's only an x-intercept at that point if we have x equals a number because it's a, a line going straight up and down. Um, it would only intercept the y-axis if it's on the y-axis. So that's the only time it would actually touch it. Um, so just kind of a practice there in graphing either a, a flat line, for a horizontal or a vertical line. All right, let's go ahead and check that guy and keep moving here. Um, okay. Um, where did my eraser go? There it is. Let's erase this. Okay, so we're gonna, for each equation, we're gonna determine whether it's linear. So this one's just kind of a little practice in um, identifying types of equations. Uh, so the main thing that you want it to have, um, a linear equation should, it's gonna be a line, um, it should have both x and y in it, but like we just learned, it could have either y or x in it. Um, and like this one is just like what we just did. That would just be a horizontal line. And let's see. Ooh, I did that really bad. If we went like this, this would be, say, we're going to pretend like that's 8 here and this was 0. So something like that. So this guy would be a, a linear equation. It does make a line. So that's a yes. Anytime we see a square, what we're actually going to have is a parabola like this. It's going to either go up or down. Um, and we, we learn this a little bit more later in math when we go up or down. So this negative, I know it's actually going to be this downward facing parabola. Um, so this is actually perfect for y equals mx plus b. Sorry, I forgot to click no here. So this is actually in the, the perfect form for a line. So yes, we know that that is a line. This one's not quite as perfect, but it's actually still there. It's y equals negative x. So negative 1 is actually the m. And then plus b, well, it would be just 0 if it's not there. So my y-intercept is 0, and I do have a slope. So this one also counts. So the only one that's not a line is this one with a square in it. And really, that's what we're looking for. We want to make sure that it doesn't have an exponent larger than 1. So these x's have an exponent of 1, and that's perfectly fine. But it can't have an exponent larger than 1, or it's not a line. All right. Continue. Um, okay, so parabola. So this is what I was just talking about. We're going to have that U shape. And for this one, it's very specific. We need to have five points on it for it to graph the line first correctly. Um, so like I said, a parabola looks like this. It's either going to open up or down. So this means that the first number is positive. This means that the first number is negative. And by first number, I mean the number in front of the x squared. So this has a negative 1 on it. I don't see the 1, but whenever I see a negative with an exponent, or not an exponent, sorry, negative with a variable, I know that it's a 1. So it's going to be a downward-facing 1 um, because it's negative here. Um, so what we want to do is just create an xy table. That's kind of the <coughs> easiest way to do that. Um, <coughs> we do want to have our vertex, and let's see. I can't remember if Alex gives you that yet. I think it's going to be 0, 0, actually, but I want to make sure. I don't know if they give you the formula to calculate this quite yet. I think because it is a very simple um, parabola where it's just um, y equals x squared with possibly a coefficient, the vertex is going to be on 0, 0, which is the origin. So the, it's a, a simple parabola. It's not scooted over left or right or up or down. It's going to be right there on the origin. So I know that it's going to have 0, 0 on it. And the reason I'm placing this in the middle is because I kind of want to choose numbers 2 to the left and 2 to the right like this so that I end up with this nice U shape like that. One of my points has to be the vertex, and two have to be the left, and two have to be the right. So I have to do that kind of pattern anyway. Um, and then to work this out, I'm going to have negative x squared. And I want to make sure this negative, it's negative x squared like this. So the negative is outside of the x. It's not included in the square. So that's why there's a negative here and a negative inside from this. 
So negative 2 squared is positive 4, but then I have this negative on the outside, which makes it negative 4. And then I have negative, negative 1. So negative 1 squared is 1, with the 1 on the outside makes it negative 1. And then I have negative 1 squared. So now I don't have a negative on the inside, but 1 squared is still 1 with a negative. And if you notice, this is mirrored here. It's negative 1, negative 1. So the next one should do the same thing. I have 2 squared, which is 4, with a negative on the outside here, and it's negative 4. So now this also is mirroring. We want to see that in a parabola because that tells us that we found the vertex. We did that correctly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put these points on. So I have 0, 0, and then negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, 1, negative 1, and 2, negative 4. We can kind of see that these points are right across from each other also. We can see that mirroring happening. Now I can just click this graph a function, and it's going to snap that parabola for me. So I don't have to do anything else once I get those five points there. You want to make sure that it does, in fact, cross over them, because otherwise, you know, even if it's kind of close, it will mark you wrong if it doesn't cross exactly over them. I don't think that the system in this case for Math 8 will snap the line unless the, the coordinates are correct. So it would actually kind of tell you, nope, try that again. Okay, so this one we are going to have a little different because now we have minus 2, which does move us over just a little bit. Um, so what we want to do is take a look at this one. We have, oops, I need to change this. We have y equals ax squared plus c, and c has to do with our vertex. So our vertex is going to be 0, c, like that. So if I have x squared minus 2, well, negative 2, that went from positive to negative, so that tells me it was a negative 2 in there, so my vertex is going to be 0, negative 2, like that. 0 stays 0, but c is negative 2. So now when I create my x, y table, I have 0 and negative 2, and then I have negative 1, or negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2, because it's 2 to the left, 2 to the right. I still have to do that same thing. Um, Alex requires you to do that every time for a parabola. So now I'm going to plug this in, and I have x squared. Sorry, I'll scooch this up. x squared minus 2. So it's going to be negative 2 squared minus 2. So negative 2 squared is 4. Minus 2 is 2. Negative 1 squared minus 2. So negative 1 squared is 1. Minus 2 is negative 1. So now if this is mirroring, I should end up with a negative 1 again here. So 1 squared minus 2, I have 1 squared is 1, minus 2 is negative 1. Yay, it mirrored. And then I have 2 squared minus 2, so negative 2 is 4. Sorry, 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2. So yay, that one mirrored again also. Um, this x squared is positive, so I also know that this is going to open upward. It's just another one of those patterns that is kind of helpful to know if you're in the right direction there. Um, all right, so we go negative 2, positive 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 1, and 2, 2. Boom, and now I can click that, and it graphs it for me. Yay. Can click check. All right, so that was some fun with some quadratic functions there and um, interesting parabola graphing. So I will see you in section 9.